folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, back and ready to do a new movie review after taking a two week break. My last review was Uncharted with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg along with Antonio Banderas. Yeah, that was the movie based on a video game from PlayStation. That was from the developer Naughty Dog. Yeah, it's a, a treasure. Um, finding action adventure type of story as you get it well anyway um, it's been a while I just wanted to take some time to take a break you know do the usual stuff so now I can finally you know take some time to do this video but I just saw the latest movie last night uh, it's on Netflix available it's called The Atom Project the latest movie with Ryan Reynolds uh, collaborating with director Sean Levy after Free Guy, which was the best movie of last year. I love that movie. And I'm so glad to finally own it on 4K, Blu-ray, and digital. And I can watch it anytime I want. Hell, I can even watch it on Disney Plus and HBO Max too, since I do have them. But I also would love to watch it on my physical copy, the way it is. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. Now, I know Ryan Reynolds has done some Netflix films um, over the years. I mean, with Six Underground, that's a Michael Bay film I have not seen. I did, however, saw uh, Red Notice, though, and yeah, I guess you could say it's sort of a non-version of Uncharted, in a way. But that's the movie with uh, Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, and Gail Godot. You know, going on to this uh, particular venture, even though they're all, you know, master thieves. Well, well, there's a secret behind that. But <laughs> okay, if I give that away, then that's my fault. Um, you know, I should review that film, too. I mean, that's another film I, I've yet to do. Um, but I know, it, it's just hard to keep up with a track of time because I you know I'm always busy with a lot of things and this is why I never have the time to do any reviews. Because of all the interruptions and everything. So. <laughs> anyway, the Adam Project is a story about a pilot named Adam Reed who somehow time travels uh, back to his uh, past when he was only twelve years old as a kid. You know, he lives with his mom, his father died, who happens to be a scientist, and suddenly he, he's about to, uh, you know, work together to actually be able to go back to his own time to stop these bad guys, you know, not only for losing everything that he has in his life, like he has a wife that he met in the future. And hopefully, you know, they're going to find a way to, to stop time traveling from even happening. And they can go back to their universe as they can come. If, you, if you're following this. <laughs> it's sort of like, um, there's sort of a blend of films like The Kid, the Disney's The Kid, that is. And there's also a bit of Big in there, and, and all these other time traveling films like Back to the Future. I know we had a movie called the, the Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt, and that came out last year. So, pretty similar. I guess you could say there's a bit of Top Gun in there if, when it comes to the time jets and um, all this other stuff that's included. And what's interesting, too, was that not only you get Ryan Reynolds, because he's been known for playing Deadpool, yeah, Way Wilson, and he's still using his persona. <laughs> In, in all of his movies. We also got uh, Jennifer Gardner along with Mark Ruffalo and I know they both were previously in the movie 13 going on 30 <laughs> which is nice to see them together after all these years. I mean I would imagine that. <laughs> and of course both of them were in Marvel films too. Um, Gardner played Elektra while Ruffalo played uh, the Hulk, yeah. And we also got Zoe Saldana, of 
course played uh, Gamora, yeah, or Gamora, whatever you like to say, from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. So what do you know? I'm seeing four stars from Marvel movies, <laughs> yeah, MCU's, and and all that. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool. Um, but we also got Catherine Keener in the film. And apparently, she plays the villain. So, what are the odds? Okay. Well, it turns out that um, it was in development hell. It was going to be originally released by Paramount Pictures, and at this rate, it was going to have Tom Cruise the star in the movie before Ryan. Which that would be pretty interesting because then it would be pretty much a Tom Gun reference to the story. Maybe there's going to be a bit of Mission Impossible, and maybe it'll be a lot of stunts that he provides, everything like that. So I kind of feel like that would have been perfect, but. But since that didn't happen, you know, they they waited too long to develop a story. And so Ryan was very interested in it since he's also the producer. And he's joining in with Sean Levy to direct. So since they were in a previous collaboration with Free Guy, as I mentioned. So they figured because they were taking some time to film this movie, you know, while... You know, COVID-19 pandemic was getting in the way. It took plenty of time to to get the story set up and filled with all the special effects that they use, all the visual effects that they created, and the and the performances all together. So hopefully, this will be you know the biggest movie to be shown on a streaming service <laughs> like Netflix. Though it would be even better if they show this in theaters. And I know there are some selective theaters that do play this movie. And they have had a share with that with Netflix uh, over the years. They even started playing their films in theaters before they end up going straight to their streaming service. So that way, you know, you'll have the experience. And you know what I find it ironic, though, about this movie? Was that... <laughs> We had a movie called The Avengers Endgame, and that came out a few years ago. And I felt like there would have been a, pretty much a reference to that. Because I know uh, Mark Ruffalo did play Bruce Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk. And he was working with Tony Stark, you know, a.k.a. Iron Man. You know, He used the quantum physics and all that to actually create time travel so they can go back to actually save all the rest of the Avengers and other rest of the teams and also to stop you know Thanos' game you know by using the gauntlet and and wiping them all out so now they can create their own gauntlet and wipe their out yeah okay well you get the idea so it's interesting that now <laughs> you know he gets to play yet another physicist in a way so it's sort of a nod to Bruce Banner. And um, also the fact that Gamora, well, it's nice that she came back, I mean, after what happened to her. But it's almost seemed like, you know, now I'm seeing going backwards to that. So let's begin with the review. It stars Ryan Reynolds, once again, along with Walker Scobell. Newcomer, Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Gardner, Catherine Keener, Zoe Sadana, and Alex Malari Jr. It's written by Jonathan Tropper, along with T.S. Uh, Nolan, Jennifer Flackett, and Mark Levin. And it's directed by Sean Levy. You know, the same man that gave us Free Guy, Night at the Museum movies, along with Big Fat Liar, and yes, even the Cheaper by the Dozen movies, but you get the idea. And so on. <laughs> the movie began set in the dystopian future of the year 2050. We made a older, but brighter, sexiest man alive 
with a smirk of sense of humor, bringing out a lot of wisecracking jokes and all. A pilot named Adam Reed, who's played by Ryan Reynolds, yeah, sums it up perfectly here. <laughs> he steals his time jets and escapes through time straight into this quantum loophole on a rescue mission in 2018, yeah, 2018 that is. However, he accidentally crash lands to 2022 instead, where Adam meets his 12 year old self, who's played by Walter Skullbill, who's struggling with the recent death of his father, which is Lewis, played by Mark Ruffalo, who's a brilliant quantum physicist, a yeah, scientist who can write algorithms uh, necessary to control time travel as we speak. He lives with his mom, Ellie, who is played by Jennifer Gardner, who is pretty much just going around, you know, working through a lot of things, trying to take good care of Adam. We also learned that Adam actually has asthma, so that's why he has his uh, breathing asthma medicine. And he's always getting beat up by two bullies after he's writing, saying all these uh, wisecracking jokes at them, or pretty much stealing everything from them and all that. Always getting into bigger trouble, even if it wasn't his fault. So I know, it was pretty hard. Anyway, Lewis uh, died from a car accident, so they're trying to grieve their loss ever since. So Adam had reluctantly enlist his younger self to help repair his jets and reveals that he's looking for his wife Laura who's played by Zoe Sedona. He just got shot and hoping that he'll find something to actually uh, cure him from his wounds. Yeah, he pretty much had a wound fart. <laughs> wow. Um, so of course he had to stay out uh, in the cavern. He was hoping that you know, his 12 year old self would not touch all the stuff that he has. But apparently, you know, his younger self is playing video games of this uh, jet game, which seems like an inspiration to it. And that was the game that uh, his father created for him. You know, through a virtual reality. Well, we did find out that his wife, Laura, supposedly was killed in a crash while she was on a mission in 2018 along with him. So hopefully they'll find hope and peace and also to escape from this one villain and she, and it's uh, Maya Sorian who's played by Catherine Keener, a businesswoman who funded Lewis's research who of course had worked together with Lewis taken advantage after his death to monopolize her own benefits, you know, building her entire headquarters around her. And so that way, now she can send out all these guards coming around and chasing Adam and, and Laura around. So now she can take over everything. So she'll be the one who can control time travel and everything. So now she's becoming the most powerful woman of them all. She's pretty much like, uh, sort of like Ron Silver's character in Time Cop. You know, remember that movie? Also a film about time travel too. <laughs> With John Club and Dan. Yeah. Fun cop. Very fun action movie. Now, anyway. Adam's being chased in 2022 by Maya, who of course is the leader of the dystopian world, joining with her Lieutenant uh, Christels, who's played by Alex Bellari Jr., who happens to be uh, their former colleagues, but he's now of course a ruthless uh, security enforcer, ready to go after him, also to assassinate him along with the rest of the guards and also to take him back to uh, 2050. But the Adams are being rescued by Laura, 
So he, she finally came back to reveal that she had escaped by an, an assassination attempt and she was left stranded in the past. She learned that Zorian had traveled back in time to alter the past in order to give herself control of time travel in the future as we speak. So Laura urges Adam to travel back to 2018 to destroy it completely, which was created by her father, Louis, uh, which was created by his father, Louis. So in order to set things right, they had to time travel straight by going into the time jets, both of them together, using the DNA and all to control it. So that way they can go straight into the loophole and they'll be able to find his father, Lewis, who of course is teaching a class, <laughs> you know, talking about the physics and all that, all that math. Of course, he even spotted a student who's actually wearing <laughs> a t-shirt or I think it's a hoodie of, um, <laughs> well, it's basically um, a shot of uh, Nicolas Cage, but has, but it says John Travolta on there. Yeah, I guess because of the movie Face Off. <laughs> uh, inside joke right there. So, of course, um, Adam wasn't getting along with Lewis for a while because of what just happened. Because, you know, he's already angry after he, his loss all this time. Yeah, of course, he's wearing his jacket, too. <laughs> and even when he was at the bar um, early in the middle of the film where somehow he spotted his bomb and just talking trying to you know reconnect with her problems and everything to be solved. They tried to enlist uh, Lewis's help but he refuses out of concern of the scientific impact on the time stream. Younger Adam con confronts his future self with his bitterness and all and anger that at this point on you know, they're still trying to cope up with what is definite. But anyway, as the two launch an attack to destroy Lewis's uh, particle accelerator, because that's what leads to that, Lewis suddenly changes his mind to actually help and joins the mission so now they can finally destroy what they came for. It turns out that this machine is electromagnetic. After they stole the hard drive that controls the time traveling device of the quantum. And at that point on, it was going out of control. You know, everything that's made out of metal is going to go straight into the device and they're going to get caught by it. And yes, the, it's going to become more powerful than ever before and the entire place is going to fall apart. Just as um, Maya was ready to shoot Lewis, but luckily the bullet uh, went straight into her younger self, so now she finally got dissolved. And Crystals has already been killed too. Yeah, when Adam was uh, using the lightsaber. Uh, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that they have a, an incredible action scenes of him using the lightsaber, kind of like... <laughs> With Skywalker in a way, but I know they, they kind of throw in a Star Wars reference uh, where he's just going around taking down all the guards and even has uh, his wife Laura, you know, shooting the guns to go after, also using those, um, those snipers and everything that she has. I mean, even when she was in the cavern all alone, she was about to grab all of her weaponries that she hidden inside the. Uh, the ground so that way she could take down all the, the bad guys around everything. Uh, wow it's just amazing how they shot this. <laughs> so okay. So now um, the Adamses and Lewis have finally escaped uh, from the headquarters that they destroyed and <laughs> they went straight into the elevator which froze in a inside joke. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's uh, an exhilarating uh, bring your father to work day. <laughs> so now they finally went back 
everything was going back to normal as it should be, going back to their own time and universe while they're just playing catch uh, inside the, the forest, which that's where their house is at. So now Lewis had finally went back to his time, all alone, you know, with his wife and his son. While Adam, as we all know, as his 12 year old self, is back with his mom, you know, and actually, uh, while she was just working with her papers, you know, for the insurance and everything, she's just, he's just um, very pleased to see her and have a Try to make up all the mistakes. And while the older Adam, as we know, is, well, pretty much a little bit younger, but, you know, he doesn't have a goatee. He's just taking a, a, a university class of, you know, trying to get to learn into, you know, the time travel, science fiction, all that stuff. But he's feeling pretty bored until he finally met Laura before they... They became married and fell in love. I mean, it's wonderful. So, there you have it. Well, okay, so it's not exactly as as bigger as the movie Free Guy that I saw last year, but still, it's pretty close. Uh, I really admire the fact that they went for a time-traveling concept for this movie, and I love the idea that, you know, we get to see, you know, Reynolds seeing his old self even though it's just played by a different actor um, once again just using his Deadpool persona <laughs> you know he, like every time he comes here he's always spreading out some wise cracks and all that while trying to be fully recovered from his his um, wound that he had where he got shot and then hopefully trying to find a way to fix everything that happened in the future or during his time that he was supposed to go to but he wants up at the wrong time and also trying his best to actually have his old self stood up against those two bullies but I, I like the scene where <laughs> since he tried and it didn't work out as, as planned Apparently, you know, his older self just ends up just getting even with these two, but he got even with this one kid that actually caught, by scaring him half to death and causing him to pee his pants <laughs> and all that. And also scaring the other one away and, and also try to, you know, try to reconnect with everybody here and hopefully try to fix everything that he knows of. While well, he's still having his grieving losses, um, but hopefully, you know, to stop against that villain who's a powerful businesswoman, the one who's behind all of this and everything. Even though Lewis was was the one that created the time travel through the <laughs> businesses, even though he didn't knew about that, but that's how he had to figure out somehow once they went straight to a different time portal. <laughs> but I, I know, it gets complicated sometimes. It really is. But it's fun. Um, it has some nice visual effects that they use. I mean, the time jet just looks amazing. I mean, the way it flies around. I mean, you get a lot of great close-ups, too. They had a lot of power in there. You can even shoot a lot of uh, lasers and all that stuff, too. And you get to fly around until you end up going straight into the quantum loophole to go to another time. So this was cool. <laughs> and yeah, they, they even had a nice of um, music in, in the movie, you know. Like, uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of uh, mixture of other 60s and 70s music in, in, in the mix of the film. Um... Uh, the soundtrack, of course, uh, was uh, by the original score was done by Rob Simonson, um, which yeah he did provided a very uh, unique, um, almost orchestrated score that that provided it. Yeah, 
And um, anyway, as for the performances, I mean, Ryan Reynolds is just did an excellent job, you know, playing the role of Adam. Um, but you can also give credit to Walker Scalpel, you know, playing in his younger self, because you know he really was <laughs> incredible. You know, for such a pint-sized kid, I mean, he pretty much is the <laughs> the poster child for Ryan because he does still does all the wise cracking jokes that he can create and come up with so and he is very brilliant too very smart but yeah he has asthma but he definitely portrays it very well um, and it was nice to see Jennifer Gardner and Mark Buffalo even if it's only a short period of time which I kinda wish there were more but I understand I mean that's just part of the you know, running time that we have to take or face. I mean, because there was a little bit of a moment where when Adam was just eight years old and he was just playing the video game that he created, we did get a little moment of time with both him and, and her that it could have had lasted a long time. Maybe there could have been more scenes with them. I was expecting for that too, but I know. And um, also nice to see Zoe Sedona again, although I wish there were more screen time with both um, Ryan and her together, you know, as Adam and Laura, because they do have some great chemistry. But again, we need more. And also, uh, Catherine Keener did a, a fascinating job playing the villain in the movie became so powerful, rich, I mean, apparently she just wants to steal everything that she does and she wants to control time travel and everything. She's just money hungry and she wants to control the universe. You know, like all villains do, you know, they always have to be so crazy. Well, that's always the case. <laughs> um, and I also like all the other effects that they use with the virtual reality and the games and everything. And the story is just um, very fascinating. How it's done and how how well written it was too. I mean, you got four writers to put this together and they really created a very special script. So it's a very fun movie. I love it. Um, this will definitely be another film to be on my best list of this year. Okay. It may not be as top as Free Guy when it comes to Sean Levy because he did a fascinating job directing this movie and collaborating with Reynolds, but I think they did a uh, great job nevertheless. I mean, I would have imagined if Tom Cruise had played this kind of role. This would be interesting, but I think Ryan really nailed it to the punch. So anyway, that's uh, The Adam Project, and I give the movie four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.